Richard T. Ely. Richard Theodore Ely, April 13, 1854, October 4, 1943, was an American economist, author, and leader of the progressive movement who called for more government intervention in order to reform what they perceived as the injustices of capitalism, especially regarding factory conditions, compulsory education, child labor. Ely is best remembered as a founder and the first secretary of the American Economic Association, as a founder and secretary of the Christian Social Union, and as the author of a series of widely read books on the organized labor movement, socialism, and other social questions. Biography Early Years Richard Theodore Ely was born on April 13, 1854, in Ripley, New York, the eldest of three children of Ezra Sterling and Harriet Gardner Mason Ely. Soon after Ely's birth, his father moved the family to a 90-acre farm near Fredonia, New York, where Ely would spend the next 16 years. The elder Ely was a self-taught engineer and lacked the skills and knowledge to farm successfully, although harsh weather and fluctuating market prices provided further hardship to the family. Ely credited his early farm life with instilling in him many valuable qualities. From a young age he had numerous responsibilities in maintaining the farm, including carrying wood, churning butter, picking up rocks out of the fields, and milking the cows. His parents were Presbyterian, but Ely transferred his affiliation to the Episcopal Church when in college. Education and Career Ely attended Columbia University in New York City, from which he received a bachelor's degree in 1876 and a master's degree in 1879. He received a doctor of philosophy degree in economics from the University of Heidelberg in that same year, where he had studied with Karl Nyes, who belonged to the historical school of economics, and Johann Caspar Bluntschli. He later received a doctorate of laws from Hobart College, receiving the degree in 1892. Ely was a professor and head of the Department of Political Economy at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland from 1881 to 1892. In 1885, Ely was a founder of the American Economic Association, serving until 1892 as the group's secretary. He later served a term as president of the organization, holding that position from 1899 to 1901. The AA Distinguished Lecture Series was formerly known as the Richard T. Ely Lecture. It was renamed in 2020. Ely also founded Lambda Alpha International in 1930. Its purposes included the encouragement of the study of land economics in universities, the promotion of a closer affiliation between its members and the professional world of land economics, on the furtherance of the highest ideals of scholarship and honesty in business and the universities. Richard T. Ely is known as the father of land economics. In April 1891, Ely was a founder and the first secretary of the Christian Social Union, a membership organization advocating the application of Christian principles to the social problems of the world. From 1892 until 1925, he was professor of political economy and director of the School of Economics, Political Science, and History at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. In 1894, an unsuccessful attempt was made by Oliver Elwin Wells, superintendent of public instruction of Wisconsin and ex officio member of the university's Board of Regents to expel Ely from his chair at Wisconsin for purportedly teaching socialistic doctrines. This effort failed, with the Wisconsin State Board of Regents issuing a ringing proclamation in favor of academic freedom, acknowledging the necessity for freely sifting, and winnowing among competing claims of truth. In 1925, Ely moved to Northwestern University in Chicago, where he accepted a position as professor of economics. He remained at Northwestern until his retirement in 1933. Political views. Although regarded as a radical by his detractors on the political right, Ely was in fact opposed to socialism. I condemn alike, he declared, that individualism that would allow the state no room for industrial activity, 
and that socialism which would absorb in the state the functions of the individual. He argued that socialism was not needed, and the alternative of socialism is our complex socio-economic order, which is based in the main upon private property. He warned that the proper balance between private and public enterprises menaced by socialism, on the one hand, and by plutocracy on the other. Ely's critique of socialism made him a political in his 1910 book. Ten Blind Leaders of the Blind, Arthur Morrow Lewis acknowledged that Ely was a fair opponent who had done much to obtain a hearing for socialism among the unreasonable, but charged he was merely one of those bourgeois intellectuals who were not sufficiently intellectual to grasp the nature of our position. Ely was a product of the German historical he was strongly influenced by Herbert Spencer and strongly favored competition over monopoly or state ownership, with regulation to secure its benefits and mitigate its evils. What was needed was to raise its moral and ethical level. However, whereas Spencer believed that free competition was best served by deregulation and a smaller state, Ely believed that more regulation and a more interventionist state was the policy to follow. Also on social Darwinism, Spencer believed that the state should not get involved in supporting one ethnic group over another, whereas Ely believed that the state should support white Nordic people against people of other races in line with the opinions of his colleagues at. Ely favored eugenics, arguing the unfit should be kept from reproducing. Ely argued that blacks were for the most part grown-up children and should be treated as such. Ely was an advocate for redlining which entails racial segregation and discrimination in real estate and has been considered influential in the institutionalization of redlining practices in the United States. Ely did support labor unions and opposed child labor, as did many leaders of the progressive movement and also some conservatives such as Mark Hanna. Ely was close to the social gospel movement emphasizing that the gospel of Christ applied to society as a whole, not merely to individuals. He worked hard to convince churches to advocate on behalf of workers. Ely strongly influenced his friend Walter Rostenbusch, a leading spokesman for the social gospel. During World War I, Ely worked to build popular support for the American war effort. He headed the Committee of Arrangements for a Win the War Convention, held in Madison from November 8, 10, 1918. Ely's political activities during World War I included his campaign against Senator Robert M. La Follette. Although La Follette was a progressive in politics, he did not support the war, and so Ely regarded him as unfit for office. Ely tried to have him removed from the United States Senate and end his influence in Wisconsin politics. Ely edited Macmillan's Citizen's Library of Economics, Politics, and Sociology and its Social Science Textbook Series and Crowell's Library of Economics and Politics, and was a frequent contributor to periodical literature, both scientific and popular. Death and Legacy Richard Ely died in Old Lyme, Connecticut on October 4, 1943. A large portion of his library was purchased by Louisiana State University and is now a part of LSU Special Collections Division. Ely is honored together with William Dwight Porter Bliss with a feast day on the liturgical calendar of the Episcopal Church USA on October 8. The American Economic Association instituted the annual Richard T. Ely Lecture in 1960 in his memory, which, unlike the association's other honors, is also open to non-American economists. It was renamed the AA Distinguished Lecture Series in 2020. His former home, now known as the Richard T. Ely House, is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The television series Profiles in Courage did an episode in 1964 titled Richard T. Ely about the sifting and winnowing incident. Ely was played by Dan O'Herlihy Wells by Edward Asner, and Ely's attorney, former Congressman Burt Jones, by Leonard Nimoy. Works French and German Socialism in Modern Times New York Harper and Brothers, 1883 The Past and Present of Political Economy Contributor, Baltimore, M.D. Johns Hopkins University, 1884 Recent American Socialism Baltimore, 
M.D. Johns Hopkins University, 1885. The Labor Movement in America. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell and Company, 1886. Taxation in American States and Cities. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell and Company, 1888. Problems of Today, a Discussion of Protective Tariffs, Taxation, and Monopolies, 1888. Revised and Enlarged Edition. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell and Company, 1890. An Introduction to Political Economy. New York, Chautauqua Press, 1889. Social Aspects of Christianity and Other Essays. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell and Company, 1889. The Universities and the Churches, an address delivered at the 31st University Convocation, State Chamber, Albany, New York, July 5, 1893. Albany, State University of New York, 1893. Outlines of Economics. New York, Flood and Vincent, 1893. Socialism, an examination of its nature, its strength and its weakness, 1894. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell and Company, 1895. Reissued as the strength and weakness of socialism. The Social Law of Service. New York, Eaton and Mainz, 1896. Monopolies and Trusts. New York, Macmillan, 1900. The Coming City. New York, Thomas Y. Crowell and Company, 1902. Studies in the Evolution of Industrial Society. New York, Macmillan, 1903. Elementary Principles of Economics, together with a short sketch of economic history. With G. R. Wicker. New York, Macmillan, 1904. Property and Contract in Their Relation to the Distribution of Wealth. In two volumes. New York, Macmillan, 1914. Volume 1, Volume 2. Private Colonization of Land, off print from American Economic Review. Madison, Y. Office of the Secretary of the American Association of Agricultural Legislation, Sept. 1918. Elements of Land Economics. With Edward Ward Morehouse. New York, Macmillan, 1924. Hard Times, The Way In and the Way Out with a Special Consideration of the Seen and the Unseen. New York, Macmillan, 1932. The Great Change, Work and Wealth in the New Age with Frank Bone. New York, Thomas Nelson and Sons, 1935. Round Under Our Feet, an autobiography. New York, Macmillan, 1938. Land Economics, with G. S. Weyoween. New York, Macmillan, 1941. Footnotes, 